I'm Chris Mühlinghaus. I'm originally from Switzerland. So I got a little accent there. Um, don't ask me why I'm still here. I think it's the weather. It's really good here. It's my job to teach you guys. It's my job to give you tools to help you clinically to relate it to the real life of what we're doing. And then it's my job to try to squeeze it in your head and help you study. And I think the purpose of this class is, is, is peaking interest is one purpose for people. I think, I, I don't know uh, why everybody's here. <clears throat> Last semester I know a lot of people come to see if they like this field. Some professions, depending on what it is, that's a prerequisite for the profession. You already know it, where you're going. But I assume that a lot of us do not necessarily know where we're going yet. So, so one job for me is to sell you an animal. Hmm. Uh, peak interest, teach you an overview of the systems that you have as good of a grasp as possible. If you want to go further in the studies, that's great. If you want to leave it at that, because that's what your pathway is or requires, then that's great. But I give this all foundation, that's my job. On your end, oh, and then I wrote down a form also for my job. So that's the other side. On uh, your end, I need uh, from you what I expect is I expect to be studious, otherwise never mind signing on with the class. Um, diligence. Um, that's I, I do expect slowly starting to expect some professionalism in people, even though it's an early class. But we go be clinical people, and that's very very important uh, uh, to be professional, to take people serious when they accomplish problems. I hate stuff that do not take my patients seriously. So I take you seriously, I expect you to take me seriously. To, to, to try to like what we're doing. And school is hard, you don't feel like it. But even if you don't like it, if you try to like it, you start liking it. You cannot like something you don't spend any time with. You can only like something when you start spending some time with. Procrastination is another one that comes with that. And procrastination with people that uh, yeah, I should be doing now until I get nothing happens. Studying is a lot of that. And procrastination is a problem between the front here and the side here. This is the part of the brain that says, I gotta do this, the frontal cortex. I gotta do it. So we make a list, right? And then it comes to doing this. I don't feel like this. And that's this part here, that's the limbic system. Or the yes, I'm so excited system. So working with those two is, is very important when it comes to procrastination. So it's the more we can move away from procrastination, the more we can make us do it, the, the easier it's going to be. It's not that, it, it, it's just, end up, it ends up being easier and less painful. Because studying is actually, lear learning, memorizing, actually what's painful is retrieving information. That's kind of painful. Because the brain makes connections as we do those things. And it's very important when we learn to learn how to retrieve information. But that process is a little bit pain, physically painful. So people don't do it. And so one thing I want to teach you this, more, this evening here, yeah, I hope, is, is a system or some systems or some helps to make that easier. Uh, Studying flashcards. I am a big proponent of flashcards. We learn information. The first thing we need to do Understand what is up here. Otherwise, never mind. If that's not if that's not answered, you forget about it. You gotta answer that question. You gotta even ask me to clarify. If I can't explain it to you because I'm a knucklehead and today's not my day, you have a student that help you with it, you laugh, but make sure you understand what we're talking about. And this stuff. So anatomy, that's what we're here for, right? Is to study over structure. Anatomy, my role is is to stuff. Physiology is how does it work? And once you understand it, you have to commit it to memory. How do we do that? Writing it. That's good. How else are we doing memory creation? Flashcard. Oh, good. Repetition. Right. There's techniques of how we can learn and memorize and keep it in our brain. And one of the things is, yes, repetition, of course. Once we understand it, all we need to do is bring it back in our brain cells and remember it. Hey, a flashcard is perfect for that. Because what do you do in a flashcard? We have one piece of information on a flashcard. You say on one side, you have a question, you say, what is an enemy? On the next, on the other side, you say, stop. Or whatever, right? In your words, though, I say stop because I want it in your words. It doesn't make any difference, any sense. If you write down the whole sentence, you have no clue what it means. And then, 
So we have it on a flashcard and information. Now we can work on memorizing it. Remembering it. That's what memorizing is going to be. Remembering what we were feeling. Remembering. Most people are kinesthetic people. If you look at learning abilities, most are kinesthetic and some are audio and some are visual. But most of us are kinesthetic. So that's just touchy and feely sort of stuff. Well, that doesn't work on a page. So when I learn, I'm a tone hawk player. When I learn and I have a bone I need to memorize, I have to like, feel the bone in my head. In my brain, I have to like feel it, almost touch it. Or draw it. Or something like that. And the flashcard is great. I have a little one piece of information and then I can put myself in that space and remember what I was thinking. Remember what it meant. Remember that anatomy means stuff. Parts. When I say stuff, I want to see parts in my head. And so then, then a flashcard becomes a, simply a tool to, 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 to repeat, to have repetition. And then once you finish writing a card, you put them in a pile. And then ideally you have a couple of clips. And in one clip you put 20 cards in one clip and you put them in your pocket. In the morning. Then your job is during that day to study those 20 clips, 20 cards. Memorize those cards. And you already understand it because you had to make the card. So it's a little time. It's frustrating. You've got to spend some time on that stuff. But once you've made that card, then you put 20 in the pocket and you realize that you're already remembering a lot of it. And you kind of learn the rest of it during that day. Then in the evening, you test yourself. Hmm. But then, this is where the kicker comes in. Then you take a shoebox. And you make five sections. The first one is the smallest, the fifth one is the largest. Once you tested those cards on that clip in your pocket in the evening, and you know the answer, you put it in number one. Correct. It's outside of your pocket. You don't remember it when you test it, so it goes right back in your pocket for tomorrow. And you add 90 more to it. But then on the evening, on the next evening, then you test your number ones. And if you know your number ones, yay, the number ones you know, you go to number two. The number ones you don't know go back in your pocket. Because you have to regurgitate it more often. That piece of information you don't know yet. So repeat it more and more and more. Spend some time with it. Section number two, we're only going to check us every other day. Or maybe twice a week. I'll leave that up to you. But then again, if I know section number two, it goes to section number three. If I don't know section number two, it goes back in my pocket. Section number three, I test myself once a week. Same difference. If you don't know, it goes into the pocket. Knowing number two, into the pocket. And if you know section number three once a week, you go section number four, that's twice before the test, section number five is storage. Once you do that system, A, you've got to minimize your work. Yay, that's your win. Because you only focus on what you don't know. Whatever you know, it goes through that system real fast. The other piece that I need to say to this, number one, try to love it. Even if you don't like it, it's going to grow on you. Try not to go to procrastination. Just go with Nike when it comes to procrastination. We all like Nike, right? Do it. Just do it. There you go. That's when I like the Jordans. Then a why question is very important. Ask that why question. And then remember, learning is not easy. Learning can hurt a little bit. And we have to get through it. I wanted to briefly talk about the learning pyramid. I should have this as a handout or something. But the problem is, when you're sitting here, and I'm talking to you, you don't remember squat. 20%, no, generally people remember 20% of what they hear. 10% of what they read. Oh, man. 30% of what they see. That's why we try to do this stuff. And then 50% of what they see and hear. And then if I'm a little funny, maybe 60%. And then, look at this. 70% of what they say and write. So writing is good. 90% is when I say something and they perform a test. That's like teaching. Guess what I teach? So I finally remember the stuff. But what you can do with that, you can have, you know, talk to your dog, talk to your cat, talk to your child, talk to your spouse, watch out about that. Teach it to each other. That's for study groups are great. You know, if you find it. Find a time for it. All right. I think I said enough.
Any questions?